Hey everyone, Reed Schlegel here, and I'm back showing you how I can refine my concepts that I created during the ideation phase in Viscom. So here, with the selected concept that you chose on Instagram, we're going to go ahead and start figuring out how you can push it further. So I found using this software, it likes it the most when the layout of the object is pretty similar to the layout of the page. So this is a very tall object, so we're going to go with a portrait, not a landscape page. So what I'm doing here is actually importing my final image from my actual sketch because I'm using the new beta version, which has a few new features I'm going to talk about here today. Now, once I have the proportions set, I'm going to go ahead and do my prompting and start figuring out how I could upscale this since I did have to rasterize it a bit to scale that image. Now that we've got a higher res version of itself that starts to look like the previous one, let's get going. So in here, what I want to start doing is thinking through the details that I want to change. So for this concept, it's not super believable yet. There's a big cylindrical space with a big handle that comes down. Great, but where's the water? Where do the beans go? How's the actual espresso get made? So here we're going to go and use our free draw, or in this case, refine or iterate version of our process using the brush tool. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just block in a bunch of water, put a quick line to show where that kind of water stops, and a few bubbles just to kind of give the hint that it's water. And then we're going to give a quick outline showing that it's a clear amount of glass or acrylic or something that's going around this, giving it a lid, and then giving a secondary color to show that there is a highlight and that is not one big flat oval, but it's actually a surface which has a top and a bottom. Now this is the cool new feature. So the in painting lasso tool allows you to select any specific area within your render and then go and iterate new AI generated concepts. So here I went into my prompt and I added in water tank. So now it knows that I'm putting that on top of my concept. So now instead of having to me go and do the whole thing again, I can just do it piece by piece. So now I've got a pretty good water ish looking tank on top, which I can iterate on. But let's try a few more. So here, let's say this handle is a little bit boring. We want to try something else. And this one, I'm thinking I want to do some type of maple or ash or a light colored wood handle. So you need to give the AI a little bit of understanding of what it needs to do outside of the prompting. So here I'm giving it a light color and then a darker color to show the different striations in the wood. And now we're also going to give it a little bit of a highlight, a little bit of a shadow. You can see if in my brushes, I'm actually going for a lower opacity, more of an airbrush look. So it feels much more smooth and doesn't give it a really shiny look, but a nice matte look. Now, once that's done, we're going to go and take the in painting tool again, select. We're going to go and change our prompt to hair and we're going to say wooden handle. And then we can change it if we choose to. For this one, maybe we're going to add maple just to make it a little more specific. Click generate. And now we can see when we have the drawing influence down around 60%, it's a little too much up for grabs for AI. So we're going to bump it up to about 90% and then see what happens. And it starts looking much more realistic. So we can keep pushing and pulling the amount of drawing influence. But here we've got something that's pretty close, pretty fast. But we also want to figure out how we can change the actual design itself outside of those specific areas. So as we were doing in our previous video, here we're going to go and take a similar color brush and we're just going to go and kind of cover up the parts of the drawing that are either adding things that we don't want or we can go and erase things we don't want. So I'm going to take a light gray on the left, darker gray on the right to take this channel and thin it out a little bit. Right now it's about as wide as the handle itself. So I don't think the channel needs to be like that. It needs to be just enough for the post to go into the product itself where we actually push it down and it has that movement and that travel. So. Now that we have this, we can go ahead and render it again. So we're just going to do a general refine iterate of the whole object until we get something that starts feeling a little bit tighter and starts smoothing out some of those lines. So now we have something that has the glass on top, the wooden handle, and the whole thing is actually coming together and feeling a little bit more cohesive. So once we have this all going, we can start to go and add any more details. So I noticed that I never put anywhere for the actual espresso to be loaded. So for this one, I want it to be super visible. I know we have this Breville DeLonghi style double nozzle on the bottom, but I think above it, it would be nice if you could see some of the ground espresso beans that are maybe preloaded into this thing before you actually use it. So I'm going to put it in with some color blocking with my brush tool, but I don't like how big it is. So I'm going to cut that down using the eraser tool and then go ahead and give it an outline, a little bit of shadow, a little bit of highlight, just to show this has some curve to it give the AI a little more information to dictate outside of our prompting what it needs to have. And then I want it to be espresso beans. So I'm going to try and give it a little bit of stippling, just something to tell it, hey, here's what I want outside us the words. So let's go in there, update our prompt, and we're going to say coffee grounds. And then we're going to change influence and figure out which is the right amount. So obviously here a little wonky, so maybe it needs to go a little bit higher. 
And this was one, honestly, I had a little bit of trouble with. I think it was a little hard for the AI to understand exactly what I wanted. But at the end of the day, all I need is something that is brown with texture on it. So one of these is pretty close. It's good enough. And for these types of renders, I also see them as things you can use as underlays. You can take it and you can put it and blur it a hair and then draw on top of it in the same software or a different one. But as I also mentioned in my last video, I like taking these drawings and putting some thick line work on it so it feels like a sketch. Obviously, we're getting much more of a kind of Van Gogh style for these drawings opposed to a crisp render. So you don't want people to be confused and think that that's the way it's literally going to be. You want people to think this is a sketch, it's still being figured out, so line work is a great way to do that. I say line work plus loose sketching equals idea that people can critique, and that is the biggest way I think you can really use this software in its current state. Obviously, as we're seeing here, we're in a new beta. Things are coming out every single week in this new space of AI, and VizCom is no different. They're coming out with new things all the time and improving the software and giving you more tools to use. So here, I'm just going and cleaning up the sketch so it feels a little bit more like the style I would like to actually put in front of a client. And once I have it, I would feel good enough to actually share it. So here, I think just giving this little bit of thick line work with the kind of quasi full rendered version of it makes it look really, really nice. But once we have this, why not go further? Let's see what else we can do with it. And first, let's tighten it up to get our final render. But once we get to that final render state, we can start going to the actual render mode, not render iterate, and start seeing some alt versions. So here, they're obviously getting a little funky and crazy, but there are some cool things happening here, like this silver body, these kind of brown mocha colored ones, these ones that have these funky handles. I like what it's doing, and this is the whole point of this software. It allows you to visualize faster, and it also allows you to think of things you might not have gone into the idea with. So I hope you love seeing this new in-painting tool, learning how to use it, and I want to see how all of you implement it into your process. So thank you all for watching. Happy sketching.